So what can make the best selling car of 2023 even better? Now, if you have a Tesla, you already know you can have it preheat, pre-cool, and even set its charging schedule automatically. However, if we integrate it with Home Assistant, we can add some features like having it automatically open an integrated garage door when you get home and turn on your lights at night. We can have it send you a customized charging reminder if you forget to plug it in at the end of a busy day. And you can even have it automatically shut your garage door, activate your alarm, run your vacuums, and turn off your lights before you leave in the morning. So stick around as we check out the new Tesla integration for Home Assistant and show you how to make your smart home even smarter. Hey there neighbors, I'm Ryan the Tech Guy and welcome back to this smart house, your source for the latest in smart home tech and great smart home projects. So starting back with the 2024.8 release, Home Assistant now fully supports the Tesla integration. So this change came after Tesla updated their API to the new Fleet API, which added a lot of extra overhead to the existing Home Assistant Tesla integration that existed before this one. So back in March, I picked up my new 2024 Model Y Long Range. This was after the unfortunate demise of my beloved Volvo S60. So it seemed just when I got my new Tesla, I found out that the Home Assistant integration had broken due to this API change. Luckily, another set of developers had created a custom Tesla integration that did integrate with the Fleet API. However, this required a whole bunch of extra steps, including setting a dedicated domain and running an extra plugin on your Home Assistant instance. But thankfully, in this latest edition of Home Assistant 2024.8, you can now do the basic Tesla integration. This means you can read data from your Tesla, but you can't actually control any of the functions of the Tesla from Home Assistant. That integration, which is the custom integration, still works today. And if you're interested, I can do an entire setup video on it later on. So let's head back to the office and I will show you how to get the integration set up and take you through each of the features of this integration. So the Tesla fleet integration that's now built into Home Assistant is super powerful and it's a very easy way for you to monitor your car and also use your car as inputs into Home Assistant to create new automations. So let's take a closer look at what we can actually achieve with this integration and how to set it up. So setting up the integration is super easy. All you need to do is go to the URL down below, or of course there's links in the description. You can also go through the Home Assistant documentation and look for vehicles and find the Tesla integration from there. So all you really need to do to set this up is have Home Assistant 2024.08 or later on, and a Tesla username and password, which of course you should already have that if you have the Tesla app set up on your phone. So all we need to do is click on the add integration to my home assistant, and that's going to open up the my home assistant tool to set up the integration for you. If it's the first time you've done this, you may have to enter your URL. Then once you get in, it's gonna ask you to accept. Then we're gonna log into our Tesla account with our email address, then our password. And of course, if you have two-factor activated, you'll need to enter a code here. Once this goes through, home assistant will prompt you to save your credentials. Then you'll be taken back to the integration screen. We can also navigate there by going to our integrations and scroll down to Tesla fleet. Then we'll click on the one device. Let's take a quick look at all of the various items that it exposes. One quick note though, if we pop over to the Tesla fleet documentation and scroll down to the bottom, we'll see a list of every one of the sensors that's exposed for both a Tesla vehicle and a Tesla Powerwall. You will notice that some of these are marked as not enabled by default. If you do want to enable these, it's very simple and I'll show you how to do it here in just one second. But don't be afraid if you see something on this list that's not on yours when you first set it up. So when we get into the integration, we'll see up here at the top right hand corner, we've got the battery percentage, which is attached to the device. And this is your battery level for the Tesla. So if I click on this, it'll show me the battery levels for the last 24 hours. And if I click on the title here, it'll make a nice wide graph for me to take a look at. Over here to the left, we've got the serial number, which is actually the VIN of the Tesla. And then you've got a bunch of sensors and then a bunch of diagnostic information. So under sensors, we've got things like battery range, which is the amount, the estimated range of the vehicle with the current battery percentage in miles. We've got charge energy added during the last charging cycle, which was, which in my case was 12.5 kilowatt hours. The current charger power, which is, it's not charging, it's not plugged in, so it's zero. You can see there a binary, whether it's charging or not charging. We'll come back to the distance to arrival here in a second. You also got the inside and outside temperature. The current shift state, which isn't enabled by default. I'll show you how to turn that on here in a second. Same thing with the speed. Status, time to arrival, and then a user present. User presence is a nice variable to know if somebody's actually in the vehicle or not. So real quickly, let's talk about distance to arrival, time to arrival, and also route. 
If you're using the onboard navigation in the Tesla, then this will populate with whatever the address of the destination is under the route here. So this means that you can actually see where the vehicle is navigating to. And another cool thing for both the current location of the Tesla and where it's going is of course, if you have this address as part of a zone, like for example, my home, it shows up in Home Assistant as home and not just an address. So that's pretty cool. Same thing with location, right? That's the current location of the vehicle, whether it's home or away. So then back up here at the top, we've got time to arrival and distance to arrival. These are both variables that are only available when you're doing navigation. So in this case, the vehicle is off, it's not being used, so it's unknown. But if I were to go somewhere, this would tell me how much distance is left in the trip and how much time, which is great for automations. If you want to set up a notification, let your loved one know that you're on the way home, that's kind of a cool way of doing that. And then we got this entities not shown. So again, there are some items that are currently not shown in Home Assistant. So to activate those, we just need to click on them, click on the cogwheel, click enable, and okay. Then click update. Now in about 30 seconds, that variable should show up and it will now be updated going forward. Down under the diagnostic section here, we've got a binary to show whether the charging cable is connected or disconnected. The current charging rate in miles per hour, meaning how many miles are being added into your vehicle in an hour. And of course, if you are using metric, I believe it'll show up metric in the dashboard. I just, I have mine in Imperial, so it shows up as Imperial for me. Then we've got charger current and voltage. And then we have the current status of all of the front doors and windows and the rear doors and windows. And at the bottom, we have time to full charge. So if it was charging, it's going to estimate what time it's going to be done doing its charging cycle. And occasionally you will notice some of these will go unknown. And that's just because when it updated, it didn't get that bit of information. And a quick way to actually refresh would be to go back to the integration, click the three dots here and click reload. This is going to reload that integration. And then I'll show you how to programmatically do that here in just a minute. So these data points can be incredibly useful to create different automations or even sending notifications or monitoring. So for example, if you wanted to come down here into the diagnostic and activate the odometer, this would be great for tracking things like maintenance cycles. So when you hit say every 10,000 miles, you send yourself a notification, add yourself a to-do list to go get your tires rotated. Then you could set that up for yourself automatically. So just a quick note on polling limits. So the API that Tesla provides you for free only gives you 200 polls per day, meaning you can only check the status of the vehicle 200 times a day. Now the integration does a fantastic job of managing this. On other integrations before, you actually had to change that polling rate where it does a pretty good job where if you're in the vehicle, it's gonna turn that polling rate up and if the vehicle's parked, it's gonna turn it way down so you save some. For the most part, you can let the integration take care of it for you but there is a way to forcibly pull the API to have it up, update and refresh. You may notice there is a slight delay sometimes when you perform an action like unplugging the car if you wanted to do something. That's because you're between polling times. So you can set up other automations to refresh, say for example on motion, and we'll go into that here in the automation section. And again, this integration only provides read-only access to your Tesla. If you wanna be able to control things like opening and closing your trunk, charging port, or modifying different parameters, you'll have to set up the custom Tesla integration, which is a lot more complicated. So if you'd like to see a full video on that, please let me know down in the comments below. But I did set up a pretty cool automation using the Home Assistant Companion app for my Samsung Android Wear watch, to where I can actually open and close my frunk and trunk right from my watch. So let me know if you'd like to see a video on that. So now that we've covered what this integration can do, let's look at some real world automations that I use every single day. So for all these automations, you don't have to worry about following along with the video. I've actually got all of them on a blog post attached to the URL down here below. So feel free to go there or click on the link down in the description and you can just copy and paste my automations and then adapt them for your specific device. So I have actually integrated both my large and small garage door into Home Assistant. I actually have the MyQ garage doors. And of course, we all know how difficult those have been to work with. So I bought the Radigos and retrofitted them and they have been fantastic ever since then. So if you want a full video on how to set that up, let me know. But if you're a MyQ user, I would highly recommend picking up one of those boards. They're pretty easy to set up and then you get complete local control and even more data from your garage doors than you did before. So it's really awesome. 
So these are all of the various automations that I'm currently using. Some of them are not really relevant because they're only for the custom integration. But the first one let's talk about is a simple one, the charge reminder. So I know that the Tesla app has a built-in reminder, but it only happens at a certain percentage. So I think it's 30%. If you're below 30% and you don't plug in, then you don't get that reminder. So I'm a bit of a battery nerd because that's my day job. And I like to keep my vehicle right around 50% state of charge. So I don't actually charge my Tesla more than usually 65% in a day. And then when I get home, I have about 40%. So I usually try to charge every single day because that's what the recommendation is. So I've set this automation up to help remind me if I happen to forget to plug it in so I don't have to be running low on charge the next day. So how I have mine set up is at eight o'clock at night or if my car returns home, this gets triggered. So then under my do, I've got a choose between two different actions. The first one says if it's eight o'clock and the vehicle has been home for at least a minute and the vehicle's unplugged and its battery's below 70%, then it's gonna send that reminder for me. So then I have this reminder sent out to me to say, hey, go plug in the vehicle. And this has actually saved me a few times for getting to plug it in before the next day to drive to work. So then the second option is if I've come home, so if the vehicle's unplugged, the garage door is closed, and the battery's below 70%, and it's after eight o'clock, then it sends me a reminder to say, hey, it's after eight o'clock, go ahead and make sure you plug the Tesla in. So this is a simple one, but it has saved my butt quite a few times. Another cool one that I use pretty much every day is the open the garage door when the Tesla's unplugged. This is another very simple one, but again, it's pretty cool because it helps speed up my morning routine. So when the Tesla is unplugged, so when it goes from connected to disconnected for the charging cable, and it's between 5.30 and 9 o'clock, and the outdoor temperature is above 40, then it goes ahead and opens my garage door. And of course, it sends me a message just so I know it actually triggered. This is super helpful because in the morning, I'll go ahead and unplug my Tesla. And then as soon as I do that, the garage door opens up and I can go open my trunk and throw my backpack in there. So again, very simple, but I think it's a cool automation and it really helps out during the day. So next up are probably the two ones that were the biggest for me, which was the open and close the garage door automatically when my car either gets home or leaves for the day. So we'll start with the easier of the two, which is opening the garage door when you get home. So when the vehicle gets to home, no matter what time of the day, it's gonna check if my large garage door is closed and my car is in drive. So effectively, if I pull into the driveway and put it in park immediately, then it knows that I'm not wanting the garage door opened. But if I pull in and sit there with it in drive and my large other garage door is actually closed, then it knows I want the garage door to open up. It's also gonna make sure that my garage door has actually been closed for more than five minutes. Then it's gonna actually open up my garage door send me notification, and it turns on my garage lights. This is really nice because when I pull in to my parking spot, it's very, very tight, and it allows the parking assist to be able to better see objects in my garage. So it's pretty nice, plus I get to walk out at night into a lit up garage. You could easily add in another building block here to say condition for the time of day. So if you say after sunset, before sunrise, so if you got home before the sunrise or after the sunset, then we're going to select light turn on and we're gonna select my two outdoor wall lights. And of course you can customize color and brightness if it supports that. But that way, when you get home, you may be waiting outside for 15, 20 seconds until that polling interval refreshes and then the garage door opens automatically. I find most days because my home zone is set just outside of my house that I'll actually turn the corner into my house and that garage door will already start to open. So this is used daily and it's been pretty much rock solid. You can, of course, customize all sorts of other requirements or items to block to prevent it from running if you do run into problems. Now for the second half of this, what about closing the garage door? Well, as you can guess, it's pretty much the exact opposite. So when the vehicle switches from home to away, and you can set a delay in here if you wanted to, but for the most part, I find that I'm usually a half mile down the road before this kicks in. So if you're really concerned about somebody getting into your garage, you might want to use another sensor to trigger a refresh and then have it trigger when you're away. So down here, on I have a choose, which gives basically two options for it to check. For the first one, it checks to see if the small garage door is open for 30 seconds and if the car has been in drive for 10 seconds. This means I've actually backed out of the driveway completely, put the car in drive, and I've pretty much moved around the corner by that point. This just prevents it from accidentally closing the door if I happen to be reversing out of the garage. So in that case, it's gonna close the garage door. It's gonna send me a notification. 
And then I have another set of items on here. So it's going to then check and see if all the devices in my house are gone. This means my wife, none of the grandparents, if there's nobody home, then I actually trigger an away mode script. This will then wait another 10 minutes, check again, and then if nobody's here, it, it sets the house into away mode, setting the alarm, turning off the lights, et cetera, et cetera. So again, you can customize this to how you want your home to work. But for my case, I ended up putting a delay in there just in case somebody's phone wasn't updating. Now for the second option, this would be if the car goes from home to away, but I'm not currently in drive. So if I've pulled off and stopped, it's actually going to perform a, a forced refresh on the entity, which will then ping the API again, wait five seconds, check again, and then if it doesn't do, then if it doesn't detect it, then it quits. But if it does, then it goes ahead and closes the garage door and starts the away mode. I added this in because I did have a bug at one point in time where it would sometimes detect me away, but then the shift status would go unavailable, so then the automation wouldn't fire. In this way, I've got it set up to where it'll actually wait, refresh, wait another five seconds, and then do it again. Of course, the last thing I have to do and I haven't set up yet is I need a last ditch effort to where it actually will send me a text message saying, hey, nobody's home, garage door's still open, do you wanna close it? So that's something I'll add in later on, but so far it's always triggered eventually. It may have been an extra 30 to 40 seconds after I've left the house, but it's always triggered after I left the house. All right, one quick thing I forgot to show a specific example of, and that's forcing the Tesla integration to refresh based on something else happening. So in this automation, I have it if my real link driveway camera detects a vehicle because it has onboard vehicle detection in the driveway, it triggers this, only running if the Tesla is away, then it simply performs this action of home assistant core integration update entity. So this forces an update on the location of the vehicle, then that should allow my other automations to fire. So effectively how this would work is if the Driveway camera detects a vehicle in the driveway, it will update the Tesla's location, which then should trigger the open garage door automation. You could of course use any other entity to trigger this. For example, you can even set up something like using your location from your Home Assistant Companion app when your vehicle's away, or if your vehicle's home, you can use a motion detector in your garage to trigger a refresh to check and see if something happened like unplugging your Tesla. All right, so there you go. There is the basic overview of the integrated Tesla fleet API in Home Assistant, and also some example automations that I use daily. Now, if you have any great ideas or are looking for some advice on setting up an automation, please leave them down in the comments below. I'd love to hear what you've thought of and other cool things that I can add to my smart home. Now, I am working on a few other follow-up short videos for some other automation that ideas that I've come up with, one of them being launching the app Waze when I start navigating during, say, rush hour. That way I can get up-to-date traffic information and also know if there's any speed traps ahead. So let me know if you'd like to see a full video on that as well. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below or join our Discord server. I try to be on there daily to answer anybody's questions that they have for either product review videos or project videos. Thanks for sticking around and I'll see you in the next video.